Well, hello and welcome to Unleashed. I'm Carl Metzler, and this week I have the privilege of introducing you to the men, women, and canines that protect some of the most important people in all the world. We're getting a rare glimpse behind the scenes of the United States Secret Service Canine Program and meeting the dogs that protect the President of the United States of America, right here on Unleashed. There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. Welcome to the James J. Maloney Canine Training Center. My name is Mark Meisner, and I'm the program manager for the United States Secret Service Canine Training Section. What started in 1976 with six dual purpose trained dogs has grown into 120 canine teams. And our goal is to try to get beyond 200 by 2028. We started with only three trainers, and now we're up to 21. With experience in law enforcement and military, in search, tracking, apprehension, explosive detection, training for law enforcement and special forces missions, our team has over 350 cumulative years of experience teaching dogs to work in any environment for any mission. By 1998, our threat odor library far exceeded that of any other canine program. Therefore, we decided we should go to single purpose explosive detection dogs and with that, we were able to adapt to the environment and start using those dogs in a variety of different ways to complete the Secret Service mission of keeping the president, vice president, and appointed protectees safe. Of those teams, we started to look at other ways in which we could use them. And by 2012, we now have our personal screening by canine, PSC, in which all the visitors that come to our White House complex now go by canines and in a matter of seconds are screened. By 2014, we added the PSCO program, personal screening by canine in an open area. We took that same idea outside the fence line and now we're intermixed with the public to search and locate threats before they get to our sites. It's estimated we search a million visitors a year. These programs add to our layers of protection that the United States Secret Service uses to keep the president, vice president, and assigned protectees safe. It's estimated in total we do over 10 million searches a year. When you think of every bag, every vehicle that comes on complex, the vehicles in the president's motorcade, to arenas and coliseums where thousands of guests are there for a speech. And now they can all be searched by canine teams as well. I said we went to single purpose dogs, but we didn't forget about patrol. Our emergency response team responsible for the White House grounds, Camp David, and national special security events. Well, a canine officer brings such special and unique skills. Speed, agility, the ability to track and search, and of course, to aid with apprehension. So our canine officers are an integral part of that emergency response team. Our hope is to give you a glimpse behind closed doors to see into all of these four special programs. To see our training staff, who's there through the entire lifespan of a dog. They're there at selection, pre-training. They match handler to the personality of the dog. They're there for full training, in-service, validation, certification, and ultimately to decide when that dog retires. Our facility itself was specifically designed to help us train these programs. And I also hope to introduce you to the men and women of the United States Uniform Division who become our handlers. They may go through an additional 30 weeks of training beyond the six months it took them to become an officer, beyond what it took them to become a member of the emergency response team. And then we have add-on training like our canine emergency medical course that allows our handlers to provide care no matter what the emergency is, no matter where they are in the world. 
Being a handler in the United States Secret Service is a unique role. We're gonna ask you to take a partner into your home, to care for them, to go to work almost every day and travel the world together. And then hopefully, after a long career, retire them as a member of your family. And then here at training, we honor every canine that ever served. I hope you enjoy this glimpse into what it takes to become a member of the United States Secret Service Canine Program. From the trainers to the handlers, but most importantly, I hope you enjoy the look at what a canine goes through, through the training and the assistance they provide the United States Secret Service in their vital mission every single day. For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. When it comes to elite canine and handler training, the best of the best turn to one place, Von Lick Kennels. Von Lick is the premier full-service canine training center and detection service provider in the world. Their world-renowned training methods and experienced training staff produce the best canine and handler training available anywhere. When only the best will do, join over 5,000 law enforcement, government, and civilian agencies who count on Von Lick Kennels. Are you tired of the same old toolbox that doesn't keep your gear organized, clean, or protected? Then you need a cam locker. Our exclusively designed aluminum toolboxes have hefty T-handles, insulated lids, and feature the cam locker system. The toughest aluminum toolbox lock. Proudly manufactured in the USA, cam locker will be the best and last toolbox you will ever own. So keep your tools and gear secure with a cam locker toolbox. The key to security. My name is Brian Mallory. Um, I have been with the Secret Service since 1998. Um, I became the lead trainer in 2006. Um, and it has been an honor of my lifetime to be here. We have the four programs, the PSC, the PSCO, the EDT dogs, and the ERT dogs. Our ERT program is our emergency response team. It's the canine portion of the emergency response team. The PSCO is what we call personal screening open area, meaning that not only are they able to do detection on everything, but they are outdoors in amongst the people in the open areas, uh, walking through people, um, looking for a, hunting, I should say, for a potential threat. The explosive detection teams, uh, those are the teams of our pointy-eared dogs that travel the world with our protectees. They are truly the tip of the spear, and it is a handler and his dog making some of the most important calls in history. PSC is an additional duty for the EDT dogs. They will screen large numbers of people individually, and they're not allowed to be wrong. They're not allowed to give you a false sit, and they're not allowed to miss. So our search standard is very difficult for them. They all have one thing in common, performance but then they go their different directions. With those different directions, operationally, they still maintain one thing, is detection is the most important thing. We can't stop somebody, apprehend somebody if we can't find them. That's ERT. With the detection, obviously, we are searching for a threat, and those dogs have to be able to detect, so they have that in common. The ERT dogs then go beyond that, and if somebody doesn't comply, then the dogs have the ability to disrupt their actions. Um, that has the ability to deter those actions, and if needed, it has the ability to apprehend as well and assist the team. The dogs take on the ERT side of the house a very vital role in helping people get home. Um, the people who don't want to be caught don't mind hurting you and they don't mind hurting the dog. The ability to send a dog in rather than send somebody who has children and a spouse and family waiting at home for them and let the dog take that risk so that they can go home 
heroic. Um, and that's what those dogs do. But on the other side of the house with detection, there are workhorses. I mean, they do almost 12 million searches a year when you count the people outside of our venues. A uh, million people are screened each year individually. Um, and hundreds of thousands of searches are conducted preemptive by our explosive detection teams. They're looking for weapons of mass destruction. They are out there preemptively every single day looking for that. The dogs are hunting for that. And obviously we hope we never find it, but we have to train to be prepared to find it in all situations. So when the teams with EDT who do so much traveling around the world, it's important that home field is wherever the plane happens to land. That they are conditioned, that they're trained to the level, that not only could they handle the stress of the change of humidity, the stress of change of temperature, um, that they can disregard all of that and maintain a single focus. There's only one way you get that, is you have to have great dogs, you have to have great handlers, and you have to have great training. The service has made a huge commitment to this program in the facilities as you've seen, in the training as you've seen, and as well as in the maintenance training. A explosive detection dog to the Secret Service means that you don't need thousands more agents and officers to search something, uh, that you're able to search it without opening it or moving it potentially, which are high risk things when you're talking about the threat of explosives. Uh, the dog's nose saves us money, is more effective, there's nothing that compete with them on the number of odors that they um, can uh, maintain, and there's nothing that's as portable. So the dogs offer a tremendous asset. And you know, truth be told, even if they didn't offer that asset, everybody would like having one who, who has one walking around because people generally like dogs, at least the people who come to this unit like dogs to be handlers. So there's always that piece of enhancing your work life because you enjoy the animals. But then there's the business end. And the business end is the ability to, for long periods of time, in many conditions, under a lot of stress, still function at an incredibly high level. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa upland experience at Highland Hunting. Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. This winter, enjoy more of Ocean City for a little less. Enjoy seaside escapes and coastal cuisine. Enjoy small crowds and big fun. Enjoy rising with the tide and leave all worries behind. Find your reason to smile all winter long in Ocean City, Maryland. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our kinetic supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. Uh, my name is Brandon Owens. I'm a CTS uh, instructor here at uh, United States Secret Service uh, with their canine program. Right now I'm running a class for the personnel screening canine uh, open area. Um, these are friendly dogs, uh, mostly Labrador retrievers, German short hair pointers, um, we call them floppy ears. Their main job is to locate um, explosives in or around crowds. Um, they're trained to find the target odor in an open area um, and locate it to source. So the first thing we want to do when we're uh, procuring the dog is, is finding the right dog for the program. We go through many dogs uh, in the selection process. Um, what we're looking for is that dog that stands out from the others. 
um, because we have a zero fail mission here. Um, and so that dog has to be a top performer. There are plenty of dogs that can physically do the detection work, um, but it's everything else surrounding them. If they can't calm themselves, we don't need that type of dog. We don't need the dog that can't cap its stress. He might physically be able to do the work, he may have the drive to do it, but if he's not stable um, throughout the entire day, then it's, then it's a dog we can't work with. For us, looking at the breeds that we've already decided we're going to use for these missions gives us a lot of the things that we need. Then we support those things that mom and dad put in there, and then we enhance them through the training. All of the dogs that we select should want to hunt. Now we're just going to teach them. We want them to hunt with us. We want them to be part of our team uh, with that handler, and we want them to hunt in a certain manner and if they do that, they're going to be successful and they're going to get that reward that drives their world. The, the training for these dogs is, is a very in-depth and long process. So before the students ever show up, I get 12 weeks of training with just the dog. And then when the students show up and I'm pairing them together, that's another 17 week process. And so by the time this dog has gone all the way through the course, we're talking thousands of reps of finding what he's looking for. And we are making sure that he is the most proficient that he can be moving out to go out and do the mission. When you're talking about dogs that have to deploy all over the world and to that level, because you know people have said, if something happens, that's a bad day for the world, not just the United States. So, I mean, we enjoy it, but it's never lost on us of the fact of what we're actually doing and our responsibility and what we're putting out. So. We put a lot of heart and passion into putting out the very best team that we can because there's, there's no margin for error. So in the program, we go from um, teaching them basic grooming and healthcare um, classes to detection, to odor introduction, to handling skills, to um, you know, explosive ordinance classes. There's four week evaluations, there's eight week evaluations, 12 week evaluations that lead all the way up to the final uh, certification. It's a week long certification that is um, probably the hardest in the country um, as far as the standard that we, we hold these guys to. So, um, you know, I have about 15 weeks to prepare them for that final certification. The, the training is hard, but that's because we're in a zero fail mission. We cannot fail. So we have to get these dogs out there. They have to do this job well. And I will not let anything but the absolute best product possible leave this place. Taking that dog, going through initial training and getting him to a certified dog, and then the, the handler as a certified handler, but getting that team, once they're certified and, and they've been going through the trials and the scenarios that we've set up for them, they're very difficult to beat, they're very effective. The handler's reading such nuanced behaviors from the dog, he can tell if something is in the wind coming towards him or it just left him. Once they kind of reach that point as a, as a seasoned team after they graduate, this is it's a pretty tough uh, layer of security to beat. You know, there's been lots of people that have tried to make some kind of robot or a little dustbuster looking thing that can detect odor. Well, nothing comes even close to what a dog can do because these dogs can detect that one one billionth molecule in the vapor and then the dog has a brain of its own where it can put two and two together and follow its nose and triangulate it all the way to source and reason and problem solve and think this through and that's nothing that a computer can do. For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. 
That's simple human sense. Ask Safari Insurance in Cincinnati if auto owners make sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Let's try some. Why don't you head over to BlackRifleCoffee.com and get yourself set up with a Coffee Club subscription. Uh, technician Aaron Engler. Uh, this is my canine partner, Aya. So I've been doing, been working her for about three years now. It's just great working with the dog. The, the training we get is top notch. It's amazing. The level of training that we go through is because our mission is so much different than any other canine program out there. Uh, we could be called to do anything at any time. We're here uh, doing training now in Maryland. Three days ago, we were in Africa, in Ghana, Accra, Ghana. Different places, different things, working with different people, different threat levels, different types of threats. We have to train for everything all the time. We're the only agency that I know of that does that. My name's Sergeant Don McNally. I've been with the Sacred Service for 17 years. I've been at the K-9 program for 13 years. So EDT is explosive detection, and we are set out to provide a safe environment for the protectees, not only POTUS, his family, V POTUS and her family, and to ensure that they enter into a safe environment wherever they go. We also do protection for diplomats that come in from around the world as well as the embassies here in Washington, D.C. area. We are not just local, we are not just vehicles, we're not just, we're, we're everywhere all encompassing. We have to train for everything. We have to train for every place, every possible scenario, which is, again, it's difficult, but it's also very rewarding knowing that we're right, that the training staff here makes us ready for anything. Anything they throw at us, we're ready for it. It's a 24-7, 365, non-stop, all around the world. One of the largest canine programs that I've ever seen or had contact with, and, and it's a great unit, it's a great program, and at the highest level of training and experience. So the EDT mission is extremely important because no one can pretty much do their job until we do our job. We're the ones that go in and say, it's safe, everyone can do their thing. Everyone's relying on us to put them at a level where they can do then do their job. You know, again, it's why we train so much because everyone's looking at us. We're the first ones into the site. Everyone goes in, uh, you know, we go to the site, we kick everybody out, and then K-9 goes in. Hey, my name's Savia Conyers. This is my first dog, first time being a handler, so everything is very new to me. And things that are common sense with people who've been handler is not common sense to me, so it's like I'm learning something new every single day. Our mission specifically for EDT is to sweep areas to make sure our protectees are protected at all times from any type of explosive. I have a lot of pride in that. Um, my mom was prior Army, so not the same thing, but it's like sort of following in her footsteps of just wanting to protect other people and take care of other people, I'm not worried about solely myself. It's like. You gotta see the vision ahead of you. And I, I see that with being part of a team that protects our protectees. When you're protecting some of the most important people in the world, it's obviously a no-fail mission and it's obviously something that we have to keep ourselves in high regards for and to ensure that we do our job the right way and first time, there's no second chances. You train at such a high level so you can perform at a high level. So they're throwing new things at us all the time. Uh, right now we're at a stadium, which is something we do all the time because we're searching stadiums constantly. You know, it could be a theater, it could be a stadium, it could be a tiny little restaurant, or it could be a 130,000 seat stadium. And we have to train at all those different venues because we work at all those different venues, so. When I first got operational, the first month or two, I, every day it was just like, they really trust me to come to the White House every day. Like, this is a great, this is an honor. A lot of people don't get to experience this. So, yeah, for the first month or two, it, it was surreal. 
everybody in the Secret Service every day, no matter what your job is, you're making a difference. But when you're out there and everyone's looking at you and you're like, it's up to us, girl. Like we got to go in and knock it out and be the best every day. It's a no fail mission every single day. And I love it. I love doing it. And she loves it too. <laughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the United States Secret Service K-9 program. And of course, there's far more to it than what we're able to show you this week. The women, men, and dogs that make up the Secret Service K-9 teams work tirelessly day and night to ensure that their mission to protect the leaders of the free world is carried out to perfection. And hopefully, you've seen just how seriously they take that mission. But there's only so much we could fit into this week's show, so be sure to keep an eye out in upcoming seasons of Unleashed as we continue to share the story of the Secret Service Canine Program and the work they're doing to keep our nation safe. Well, that's all the time we've got left this week. We'll see you next time on Unleashed.